Good afternoon. My name is Boyan Zhu, and these are my colleagues, Zach Anderson and RJ Ryan. We're the MOCA team. MOCA is a remote diagnostics platform for health workers in developing nations. Unlike the hodgepodge solutions they use today, MOCA is an end-to-end -end system that connects health workers to doctors seamlessly. Now I'm going to pass it on to Zach to give a fuller introduction to MOCA. One of the largest problems facing developing nations today is a lack of expert medical care. While there are a lot of health workers that have moderate training, there simply are not enough trained physicians. This is Angela. Angela is a health worker for an organization in Zambia. What she does is she diagnoses and treats cervical cancer. But there's a number of problems that she runs into today. First of all, if she wants to do this treatment, she's tied to just a few clinics in Zambia that have Wi-Fi connection right now. Second, her current workflow is very complicated and takes a long time. For every single patient that she sees, first, she has to fill out a paper form. Then, she has to take a photograph of the, uh, of the patient. And next, she has to plug this camera into a TV and review it with other people. She has to retake the photograph if necessary. Then she has to download all the photos to a laptop after plugging in a cable. She has to rename the files with descriptive titles. She needs to write the renamed file names onto a paper form. And then that paper form needs to be sent to the central offices. After that, she has to type up an email with all the information that she's taken down so far. She has to attach the photos. And finally, she has to send it off to a physician. This is very complicated, and because of this, because of how complicated this is, this organization that she works for has been able to see far less than 1% of the number of people they've wanted to see. So far, in the last few years, they've seen 11,000 patients. There are 4 million women at risk for cervical cancer in Zambia now. What we've done is we've created MOCA. MOCA is a seamless, efficient, end-to-end -end solution that turns Angela's jobs into three st simple steps. In addition, because it runs on a mobile phone, she could use this anywhere she goes. She's not tied to the clinics. In addition, it's fully customizable, which means it could be used for a variety of different organizations. So I, I said um, Angela doing cervical cancer, but it could also be used by other organizations doing a variety of different clinical scenarios. These are just a few. And it doesn't take any programming to change MOCA to work for these applications. So I'd like to walk through Angela and how she's actually going to use MOCA to make her life so much easier. And it's going to increase the workflow speed. Now, Angela is going to go out to a rural health clinic and see someone named Dorothy. Now, Dorothy just went in for surgery a couple of weeks ago. She made the travel into a major city to have surgery. A problem that happens very often is a lot of people will take that trip to do surgery, have the surgery done, and they won't go for a follow-up trip because it's too hard to travel. Because of this, oftentimes, wounds will get infected. So now Angela has gone out to this rural health clinic, and she's going to see Dorothy. So she pulls open her phone that's running MOCA, and she clicks Perform Procedure. And she's going to do a surgery follow-up for Dorothy. She can enter in the patient's ID number, which is going to then tag it to Dorothy's permanent medical record with the organization. She can input a number of things. Here's the surgery site. And now she could select different symptoms. Now, because she selected pain surrounding the wound, it's going to actually ask follow-up questions about that. Now, these questions were uh, written by her organization. A number of other um, methods of input could be used. Text, GPS location to track Dorothy as she's moving around. Audio recording for notes. In some cases, perhaps you might want to listen to someone cough or something. Audio recording could be very helpful. And of course, images. So here. Um, Angela's going to take a picture of Dorothy's site of surgery. She's going to review it to make sure that the photograph is exactly what she wants to send to the physician. And it looks good, so she's going to send this off. So what's going to happen now is as soon as she sends this, Angela is going to send its clinical data, and it's going to be sent to a central server right here. Now, this server allows a doctor, even thousands of miles away, to instantly see this clinical data. And you saw it just popped up here. So a doctor could log on to this queue, a trained physician, and very quickly he could review the, um, all the question response pairs, review the image, and as soon as he's ready, he can now dispense a diagnosis. 
Now what's going to happen as soon as he dispenses his diagnosis, it's going to be instantly sent back to Angela's phone. And Angela is still at this rural health clinic. And it's going to be sent onto the phone here. And we're going to see that it's going to receive a notification. So here, if we pull down the notifications, wound appears infected, prescribe antibiotics. So this was sent back almost instantly. An interaction like this never could have happened with Angela's old workflow. What we saw is Angela going into a place hundreds of miles away from a major city, and she was able to dispense care quickly, efficiently, and mobily. Now RJ is going to talk a bit about how we actually accomplish this. RJ? So think about what you just saw. Angela was able to transmit high resolution clinical data to a doctor whose diagnosis showed up on her phone almost instantly. So how do we accomplish this? Well, in general, the phone transmits data to a remote server where doctors can log on and their diagnoses are sent back to the phone. But there are a couple of interesting things here. First. We've integrated MoCA with an industry standard medical record system, which many of these clinics are using today, OpenMRS. Second, and this is what makes MoCA really unique, is that we've engineered MoCA to be extremely robust in the way that it transmits data to the server. MoCA can switch between GPRS for cell phone connections and Wi-Fi, which is available in some of these clinics. And in the absence of all that, it's able to take the text portions of a procedure and send them via SMS to the OpenMRS server and the rest can be sent later. And when Mocha is transmitting audio and pictures to the OpenMRS server, an adaptive algorithm slices them up into pieces and sends them bit by bit. This allows Mocha to send large files over unreliable connections. The procedures, once they're in OpenMRS, a doctor can, make, can look at them and make their comments. And once a diagnosis is made, the diagnosis is transmitted back to the phones via SMS. So we've talked a lot about how MOCA is great for Zambian health workers, but we think we're tackling a much more universal problem. Health workers in many different nations need MOCA. In fact, this winter break, we're deploying a pilot program in, with partner clinics in the Philippines. We want to use this pilot program to increase interest in MOCA and adoption in other countries. The people who work closely with these clinics tell us that they think that MOCA will have a huge impact on the way these health workers operate. As Zach mentioned, MOCA allows these health workers to do things they just could not have done before. They can go out into the field, reach more patients, and give better care. So that's why it's really important when we talk about MOCA that we're talking about a long-term solution. That's why we made MOCA integrate with existing medical frameworks. It's also why we made MOCA open source, so that it can fit future frameworks as well. We want MOCA to be a growing project and one that will evolve to fit the needs of health workers worldwide. Thank you.